Good morning, ma. Good morning. Please, can we meet you? My name is Mrs. Nea Maka Mosisi, and I'm the CEO of Magnesi Collections. Okay, tell us a little about Magnesi. Okay, so Magnesi Collections is an Abuja-based fashion brand that was established in 2011 by myself. Um, we specialize in the production of handmade bags, footwear, fashion accessories with both Ankara fabrics, continental fabrics, and leather. Um, our business is homegrown. Everything we used to produce, or 80% of our production, everything we used to produce, our, our bags and accessories are bought locally. We hire local staff and we export our bags. We sell in Nigeria and then we export our bags to various countries around the world. Wow, that's lovely. So from the plethora of crafts, why did you choose handbag, handbag making? Um, because I love handbags. I'm that girl who wants to have a red handbag in all the shades of red. You know, there's white red, there's burgundy, there's pepper red. I'm that kind of girl. And then I also just love the fact that I was able to start making bags when I started with our local fabrics. So first of all, it was because of my love for handbags. Um, I owned a variety of handbags before I started and I feel a, a bag is a fashion accessory, very important fashion accessory or accessory for any, any, any woman. Uh, you never see me out without a bag, be it my normal boss lady work bag, be it a little bag, be it even if I'm going just into the market to buy something, I always have a pouch that can just have, house my, my phone, my wallet and my maybe my cards and then some money. So a bag is something that I love and obviously when I choose something I was going to do in fashion that would stand out, I chose bags because of the love I have for handbags. Wow, that's lovely. So what's your inspiration before embarking into handbag making? What inspired you? Um, my story is different. Um, yes, I love handbags, but when I decided to go into this business and I, I sat down to think about what I was going to do, I was unemployed. So unemployment was the route to my deciding to actually take on a craft. I'm a social worker in training. I'm a GSE certified social worker. I schooled in England, moved back to Nigeria to be with my husband, and I really couldn't find gainful employment. So while I was at home, going in between jobs, I sat down to think, what do you want to do? I had learned how to make clothes, but bags stood out for me. And then Making Ankara bags with just a little machine my mom had got for me as a wedding present. You know, I would go out with those bags, those soft, flabby bags I made then, and people were ooing and owing. And I thought to myself, this is, this is a business, you know. I started out with the Ankara and went into Damask. If you know Damask, if you are a Nigerian woman, we use Damask for our hair ties. It was so involved then, around 2011, 20, 2011, 2010. And obviously the Damask was amazing. It had an amazing array of designs on it. And you can imagine just holding it. Short, some women, when they went to weddings, just fold their Damask and hold it in their hands in front of their clutches. And it's like a bag. So when I started, I was like, oh my God, those fabrics and just the the... The response I got from people, from what I made to use for myself. I'm that kind of uh, girl that when you give me the scarf to tie for the wedding, I don't tie them because I don't use, I don't do the head wraps. I want to form, create something out of it. So I started creating um, bags, flabby bags and soft things that I could just put my phones and stuff as I was going out with, with those materials. And you had people asking for it. And I thought, well, this is a business. I'm unemployed. Why don't I try this? that was how it started so literally being unemployed and then just the re um, the response i got from people drove me into this um this craft that okay. I, uh, I am i'm doing today or I, or I i work on today yes okay since unemployment is your driving force so have you been able to like influence youth looking for job with the unemployment rates currently in nigeria well before i started producing my own bags you could count maybe how many people who actually made bags in Nigeria. But right now, if you go to probably places like Lagos, um, obviously Abha and a few other places. Let me talk about Lagos because it's like maybe the youth that I have impacted on. I have impacted on a lot. We set the trend. Magnesi sets the trend for what goes on. 
I started doing a lot of things, using sweet linings for my bags, the kind of bags I created. I was first person to make an Ankara bag here in Nigeria and put a chain on it. And you can go out now and you see so many other young girls, men, young women and men, creating their own brand. We actually even build brands for other people, Nigerians who are outside the country. And I don't want, I don't know the percentage of, obviously, what the percentage of, of, of people they're hiring, but I can tell you is a whole lot. In my business, I hire from starting this business myself, employing my first, uh, my first employee was my gate man. Today I have over 45 young men and women who work in my business. So you can imagine, this is me. Imagine what is happening with the other young people. And it's not just maybe them even starting to produce bags. It's also inspiring other young people and telling them, if I could do it, you can start frying a car today. You can start making pastries. I know a lot of all those young people that have seen what I was able to do literally out of nothing. I started this business with less than 5,000 naira. And I was able to change, transform that business to obviously what it is today. So you can imagine what that story does to people. So yes, indeed, I'm sure that we're impacting and inspiring a whole lot of young people out there. Mm -hmm. um, who has been your biggest mentors in this industry? And what's your best advice that they've actually given out to you? Um, when I talk about my mentors, um, one of the first people that I would look up to when I started this business, funny enough, was Oba Igweze. She owns Design, Design Babes here in, um, um, in Abuja. She's called Design Babe and her brand is Design. Then you have my friend in Lagos also, Uma Clothing. These are people who are into clothing. But they were like people that I would look up to because they had started making their own they had started their own businesses became uh, they be became entrepreneurs before me and i will go to them for business advice obviously running a business is not easy because there's so many pitfalls that you face so these were the people i, I would go to when i was like oh my god what do i what do i do where do i go can i continue am i able to strive on and i think one of the biggest advice that they gave me was just to remain consistent just to keep pushing, never give up, try new things, you know, and obviously innovate and continue to change, you know. Change is something that you can never, um, you can never say no to. So yes, indeed, this is the advice I've gotten from them. Remain consistent, I'll tell you, that one is one that is always resounding. So what's your favorite part about being an accessory designer? Um, being an accessories designer for me is, um, it's um, very fulfilling. My favorite part about it is, for me, is the creative process. You know, when you take a piece of fabric, you know, this was a piece of fabric before it was transformed into this. You know, you see this tissue box. The creative process thrills me more than anything. You know, sometimes um, I've gone to people's houses. I, I remember when I started my business and I was working with Ankara a lot. And I'll go to my friends' houses and I'll say to them, they were like, so you can use any any fabric. And I'm like, just that, that your blouse, if you give it to me, I'll lose it and I'll, I'll turn it into a fabric. And they'll be like, huh? i never forget the day I went to Mrs. Odife's house here in Abuja. She had this beautiful exotic lace that she had had for so long. And she had just dropped it on the floor. And I was wondering, what is this thing on the floor? It's not the rag. It's because it was shiny and sparkling. And she was like, it's just something that she had had, uh, the clothes she had, and she was going to get rid of it. And I was like, ma'am, please, can I have it? She turned around and said to her daughter, she had her, see your friend. I said, yes, mommy, give me, I'll convert it into a handbag for you. And I never forget, this fabric had this, um, the soap and um, the docks or so, or, you know, the beautiful dogs or swines drawn on it with glitter. And I took this bag and I come back. I think we made about three or four bags out of it. She was going to have this in the bed. And I remember taking it to her house and giving it to her. She was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, seriously, this would have been garbage. So you can also imagine, obviously, when I started this business, I would go to places like my friend's store or what. They make fabrics. Obviously, tailors have a lot of waste. 
and I would recycle those waste. Some of those things that they don't they, because you can't make a blouse maybe out of a potter yard, but I can make a bag, a cloth bag out of a potter yard. I'll take those things and I would see myself recycling. So obviously helping the planet and the environment from just picking, like I'll go in there and I'll be taking, you know, sometimes the, 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 the girls there, and it was, it's, it's, it's a joy for them because what they now started doing is they now started keeping all those materials that they couldn't use to convert into anything to, for, for Auntie Amaka. When I come, I'll pack them and I'll go and turn them into nice bags instead of just being them. You know, and for us, even in our business today, that's what we do. Even now that we're now doing leather, we have um, the clothing. They were clothing here in Abuja. They turn all those leather, our leather waste, fabric waste, metal accessories, and then they turn it and recycle it and turn it to clothing, foot mats, and different things for the home. You know, really sold very expensively even because it's not easy to recycle and turn those things into things. Uh, into what, what when you see the pieces of what they do, you wouldn't believe it. So it, it's 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 um. Yeah, it's amazing what we can do and really and truly that, that's my trail. So if you ask me what's the best part about bag making for me, it's the creative process and then the expression on people's faces. When they even come in and say, <sighs> when you see this in Africa, you just think, well, it's made in China, it's made in Europe or somewhere. But when you come in and they tell you this is made here in Abuja, they're like, Aha. most times when we started, you just hear it's a lie. But now most people obviously know that, yes, we're here, but yeah. We're able to do that and i think it's fantastic <laughs> so what was your biggest fear when going out and starting on your own line yeah, my biggest fear i would say was would people buy would people look at what i had um how was i going to control running my own business i didn't have any business degree um did I want to learn, really, really learn? Because if you want to keep running your business and holding your own in this field, you should learn. You should be vast in business. Obviously, you hear when you want to start a business, you should have a business plan. Businesses like mine weren't born out of a business plan. You know, I'm just like maybe a mom and pop shop that just popped up, you know. Because I started this in the front door of my house, on the floor. I didn't even have a workshop. When I finished, I pack up. Under the bed in my guest room was my first storage, you know, and it was just, what would people say, you know? I was lucky I had a husband who supported me right out. I had a mom. I grew up with a lot of creativity around me, so I had cousins who would make their clothes. My mom is very creative, makes her beads and all. So I had that family support, which obviously I needed to push me along. And then I will tell you is also the the thrill of producing in Nigeria or doing something different that people are not set to be doing that helped me and propelled me on for every time I wanted to quit maybe you get a call from somebody in Paris saying oh my god I'm in, I'm in Amaka I'm in Shand de Lise with your Ankara bag and people are stopping me whatever you're doing please don't stop I will not tell you how many times I got that call a friend in Selfridges in London going in to buy a 2,000 pound bag and people are going to have 15,000 naira kara bag and asking her, oh my god, what is this? So really, if I tell you I wasn't scared, I was. But things like this and just blessings like this or just getting those phone calls and people encouraging me. And then obviously putting out a product and people who didn't even need it, you know, good family, friends, trusting to buy one propelled me. But indeed, there's nothing you start in this world that... You're not afraid of. I'm ever, I'm never a hundred percent on anything I create. My staff can tell you that even eleven years on, you know. Last time my HR said to me, I don't know if it's humility or what. It looks like you don't know what you do. But I'm like, no, I am never a hundred till the customers come in and start buying and start telling you they love it. And maybe it works for me because I, I'm always surprised. I'm always surprised I put this out. And indeed, yes, people love it, but I am never a hundred. I am always like waiting for the validation of my customers to say, okay, this is it. And obviously, yes, in case I put out anything and they don't want it, then we've gotten it wrong. But yes, I am afraid and I still have that fear today, especially in the economy we live in and things we face running a business. Inflation, you know, high cost of materials, 
just high even the living costs that people are facing currently affecting your sales and all that so there's never a time where you're very you're 100 or you're 100 percent comfortable but yeah we got i guess we keep pushing okay so talking about inspiration what inspires you to design a new collection because we know bats are in varieties so what's your inspiration to design something new um the need and the want obviously you start you produce a bag today and people buy it they can only buy so much they want something new just like me and you for every day you go out you have this jacket you've worn it you won't go making the same jacket you want it in another shape so we know that our customers want something new so our inspiration comes from so much a lot of bags we design here today come from our customers accent there's nothing we design in Magnesi that doesn't have a functionality. Before I design any bag, or even if I just see a bag, I love it. When I finish, the first question I ask myself is who is going to use this? What are they going to want to put inside? There's no way we're designing a bag currently that can't fit the foam inside. Because indeed, obviously, you will tell yourself, oh, I'm designing this bag for Aisha. She's going out. She's going to have her phone. She's going to want to put her wallet. Even if it's a small wallet. So if it's a small bag, you must have a space for a small wallet. She's going to maybe want to have a pen, a tissue paper pack, her lipstick. You know, what can this bag fit? How functional can this bag be? Because if you design a bag that's not so functional, you know the clutches. The rate you sell mini bags or maybe clutch bags that don't have even chains holding them. If you're making a bag that people always have to hold like this. How long do they want do they want to carry that bag every time? No, they just want to carry those kind of bags to go to church and come back or go to, go to a, a party. It's not something they want to use every day. And then obviously most people, because money is not flowing like the river, want to buy something that they can use every day. Even me as a bag designer, I still have the ones I love that I carry and then in a week I'm still using that bag. It has to fit my daily essentials. So we always ask ourselves that question. We don't just design anything. You're solving a need. Remember, you're in a business and for everything you do, there's a need. You have people walking into the store and they're saying, oh, we, I want the work bag that can fit my laptop. Or you have a mother. I want the bag that I can put some things for my child. I don't want to be carrying two bags and talking a child along with me. You know, so there's always a reason for a design. Yes, we design for different locations. We design bags that people can go to the parties with. Obviously, like this silver bag is not your bag that you're talking around every day. Something you want to go to a party with, hang out in the night with your friends, go for a wedding or a church. You're matching a very spectacular outfit. But when you're going to work, you want a black bag. And then when you're going to work, what do you want to have inside your bag? So yes, our designs come from the needs of a woman. We look at a woman and then we decide okay, this woman is a boss lady, she's working in central bank for exact example, she goes to work, she has files, she has things she wants to put inside. Or you're designing a bag for a young girl who is running her own business, who wants her phones and a few other items inside the bag. So we have our designs, in diff we have our bags made in different sizes, different ranges and then for different people. And yes, I'll tell you, a lot of the designs we make here are better from another design you made this bag i can't tell you how many of my designs that i redesigned the small one first and the customer goes oh, amaka please this bag i like it though but it's small can we make it a little bit bigger so that i can have a little more stuff in and then wait for it another customer walks in or a few more women come in and tell us but if it's bigger you know us now nah? you know what we need make it a little so we have bags that you will see maybe our idara bag you see it has three or four sizes. Some of them have the top handle, some of them have the chains for the people who say they don't want to have the bags. They don't want to hold it as a chain, they want to hold it as a top handle. Yeah, you find the young ones who don't just want to hold it as a shoulder bag, carry it as a shoulder bag with a chain, they want to cross it over. And then you got into the younger ones who really just want to have it off their body and have their hands free to do any other thing as they're working. So our designs, yes indeed, come from different um, inspiration from obviously what we want to put out there and obviously also what our customers want and what they need and how functional it's going to be for them mm -hmm. so where do you hope to see your brand in the future mm. obviously i want to see my brand successful i want us to still be here 
you know, I want this, um, I always use that word sustainable. As I create my brand and as I build my brand, I, I hope I build a brand that even when I'm not here, the people who are growing this brand with me today will carry on. Um, I hope that we're not just going to be in selling in Nigeria, in Abuja, maybe our, this is our, like our first, uh, our only physical location in town because obviously a lot of things are online. But we're able to also see if we can build other physical location, more distributors across Nigeria and then go to other countries. We have a retailer, we have a, a distributor currently now in Ghana, so there's Magnesi Ghana. And we're looking to have other Magnesis come up, Magnesi Angola, Rwanda, London, you know, we hope to still be here, have more branches and reach more people and also even create more things. We call it Magnesi Collections because we want to collect a lot of things as we go. So I hope to be collecting a lot of other fashion and obviously even home and if possible office things as we go. So yes, I hope we're still here and doing well, being sustainable and growing more than what we are today. There's so much pressure for designers to come out with their greatest collection season after season. So what advice would you give young designers just starting out and hoping to make it big in the industry? Um, I will tell them, obviously yes the pressure is there, but you first of all want to remain consistent. I'll tell them not to be afraid to change. I'll tell them to not to be afraid to stand out because if you want to start a new business, no matter what it is, even if you want to go into this bad business, you want to do it slightly better or different from what I'm doing. Because if you're trying to target my customers, the only reason they leave me is because you're doing what I'm doing or doing it way better than me or giving them other designs and shapes. So I would say stay consistent. For us, we are we're making accessories, so it's not something that you would say you have to, like maybe even in the world today where you have different seasons, like obviously if it was abroad, you have the fall, you have the summer collection and all those collections. You can work with one collection for maybe even two quarters of the year. So decide what you want to do for your brand, right? Don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to innovate. Call your shots, put out your products and as the demand comes, because of the climate, especially we find ourselves in being in Africa with inflation and everything going on, decide what you want to do. You want to give your customers different collections every year, plan for it, execute. Don't fall in with the pressure, because the pressure most times make people make mistakes. For us, the best time for us to release a new collection in Macmissi is towards the end of the season. And we've, we found out that whatever we release. So most times we don't release more than two or three new bags in a year till the end of the season, Christmas, which is when people have their most functions. This is when people are getting their bonuses. This is when they are deciding to buy for even the next year. I have customers who just shop maybe towards November when they know the sales is there as well. People love bagging. That is when they bring out their collection and they buy what they're going to use for the next year. So decide to do you, always remain consistent and focused on what you do. Yeah. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. Thank you.